everybody, uh, welcome to the first live version of, of the Romania show. Uh, all kinds of good stuff coming up for you today. I hope you're watching the show. If not, you'll be watching the uh, recorded broadcast. Uh, good Lord, I'm actually a little bit nervous. I don't know why, but uh, anyway, here we are. We're setting off. This is something I've been wanting to do since, uh, good gracious, the end of last year, December or January. I had some conversations with some people. I guess I've got to look at the camera. And we were talking about this, we were talking about that, and this is what we came up with, finally, in the end. So, as you can see, I've changed around some of the graphics, I've changed around some of the uh, settings on here, and uh, that's really cool. And we're going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff. So, let's start off with a few questions that I've had. Uh, why is the quality of the video lower than it was before? Well. Uh, first of all, there's two versions of this show. One is the live version, which is completely free to watch and completely free to broadcast. There's an ad that you have to watch, but um, considering the fact that it's costing uh, monetarily nobody anything, uh, the live version does have a little bit less quality. I'm looking at a little screen here, and it's broadcasting uh, just fine. And the... Uh, I'm also recording this show on my computer so that later I can post it on YouTube and then you can see it in the much better quality. So if you're watching it live, you're going to be seeing the slightly less quality. It's a little hard to see, especially the uh, text right there on the bottom of the screen. It's a little out of focus and uh, some other things. Maybe the date's a little blurry, but the answer to the question is the live version, which is uh, via Ustream.tv. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to watch the show live, go to Ustream.tv and type in The Romania Show. Pretty simple. And you can see uh, the show as it's unfolding, 7 p.m. Romania time. Uh, that's 12 p.m. on the East Coast of the United States, 9 a.m. California. 5 p.m. in Britain, and 6 p.m. in the rest of Europe. And I think I calculated that it's like 2 o'clock in the morning in Australia. So, wherever you are, if you've got any kind of questions, any kind of comments, uh, anything you want to ask me about uh, concerning Romania, well, that's what we're here to talk about. And so thank you for joining me. And as you can see behind me, there's a little... Uh, up there on top of the screen is some of the stories I'll be talking about today. We are going to go longer than 10 minutes, which is what I've been doing before. That was just sort of a test, and that's what's going on with that. Now, um, again, what is the purpose of the show? What is going on? Well, uh, I guess it's time to tell the story. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was in uh, Bucharest. Uh, that's the capital of Romania, in case you're just learning about this country and I started having a conversation with a guy actually the, the, no, I'm not giving away any security secrets here or anything but outside the, the embassy down in Bucharest uh, the guards are all Romanian I'm not quite exactly sure why but that's the way it is so I had some problems I, my photograph wasn't the right size or uh, I can't remember exactly what it was because this was a couple of years ago but Anyway, I had to go in and out, in and out, in and out a couple of times. So every time I would go in, I would go out, and I, hey, how's it going? I talked to the guy outside uh, at the uh, embassy, and I talked to him in Romanian. Why not? He's a Romanian guy. And uh, about the third time I came out, he was like, so, did you get the visa? And, and I said, visa for what? Because I was there, actually, you know, just in case you totally don't know who I am, I, I am an American citizen and have been all my life. So he thought I was going to get a visa to go, like, visit to America. And in reality, I was taking care of some uh, passport issues. And so I said, no, man, you know, I'm, I'm not getting a visa here. I'm, I'm a citizen. And he's like, no, well, well you're Romanian. You, you've been, uh, you, your family's Romanian. I said, no. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I, I don't have any Romanian blood or whatever you want to call it inside of me. And I'm just a, kind of a goofy guy who lives here. And uh, so he was like, no, I can tell by your accent that you're from Transylvania. And, you know, that was kind of a stunning thing for me because 
essentially what he was saying was he, based on the way I was speaking to him and my accent and I guess the correct grammar or whatever else it was, he truly, truly thought that I was a Romanian person. And that kind of shocked me because I first came to Romania years and years ago. I, I didn't know any of the language. I didn't know um, the culture. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I knew the capital was Bucharest. So, you know, that's, that's about all I knew. I mean, and so I moved here uh, mostly to get away from the United States and some of the craziness going on over there. But I also like Romania and I spent a few years uh, learning the language and meeting people and this and that and I guess I, I I sort of had adapted myself to this country in a way that I hadn't quite realized because I, I didn't realize I was that integrated so I meet this guy outside the embassy he makes the comments that he does I got a long train ride back to Cluj which is where I live and I kind of realized that man you know you know do I really speak Romanian that good that some guy uh, you know, Romanian guy is completely convinced that, you know, I'm, I'm a real Romanian. So, you know, I thought about it and I started my blog, uh, but kind of based on what that guy said, it's uh, www.kingofromania.com and it's in English, 99% of it is in case you haven't seen it. And I started my blog right after that visit to the embassy, and I just kind of wrote down some stories about some of the things I'd been through. And at first, it was sort of like a part-time thing, or maybe once a week I would write on there, just for you know, just for fun. I mean, a lot of times people feel this pressure when they make a blog, you know, that they gotta either you know. Uh, sort of like once every six months write something and then, you know, just kind of feel guilty about it or else they gotta like make it into this like serious project where they gotta write every day and they gotta make it look super professional and spend all this money. And, you know, I didn't do either one of those things. I just wrote when I felt like it. I still do. Uh, um, it's not about making money, but uh, I guess some people really like what I've written and so they Shared it with their friends, and actually, I I had never even used Facebook, and I someone started sending me messages saying, "Hey, you know, on Facebook, people are sharing your, uh, your your blog all over the place, and a few things that you'd written." And, and I started seeing like thousands and thousands of people come to my blog, and I was like, "What in the world is going on here?" So, you know, that was kind of cool, and. Uh, you know, uh, as that took off, I started, you know, getting a lot of cool feedback, and especially from Romanians saying, wow, you know, it's great, you know, a foreigner and lives here and knows what's going on and, and talks about our, my country. And, you know, there's a lot of Romanians, uh, I don't know exactly how many, two million, three million, who live outside the, the borders of Romania, and a lot of times it's for work, occasionally, you know, they marry somebody or something, but... You know they kind of miss their culture, and and it's uh, it's hard to explain to the people around them, um, you know, where they come from, because most people don't know anything about Romania. I, I told you I already could I've admitted a thousand times that I, I don't know uh, very much about Romania. I didn't know before I came here, so I realized that the next evolution would be to write down everything that I do know about this country, the current information, and. Uh, put it into a book, which I did, and it's called The uh, Complete Insider's Guide to Romania. I'm very happy uh, my blog, once again, kingofromania.com, to announce that the 2012 version of that book is now for sale. This is not going to be a show for me pimping my book nonstop, but uh, uh, I believe I do. Hold on one second. I do have one right here. This is, a, this is the version. Whoops. There you go. This is the version from last year. I guess I should hold it up on this side. Whoops. You can't see it too super good. Ooh, it's kind of, kind of transparent and ghostly, but yeah, I wrote this book. You can see it's a pretty hefty book there, and, um, you know, I thought maybe two or three people would buy it, mostly my family members, quite honestly, and then bam, you know, people started reading it and buying it and uh, talking about it and, and contacting me, and, uh, you know, today I was actually trying to think if I could, how many people that have I met face-to-face in the flesh, who bought my book, and uh, you know, just wanted to meet me because of the book. I mean, I, I can't even think of how many people it was. It's quite a few, and really cool people. And it's been great, you know, seeing their reaction and saying thank you and all this stuff. Woo! I mean, uh, you know, quite honestly, 
uh, it's been a lot of fun. So before I say anything else and do anything else, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, all of you, the, the, the readers, the fans, the, the people watching, the, uh, the people tweeting me, the people Facebooking me, everything else. And uh, it's been really great. Uh, in case you'd like to join the Facebook page for this particular show, it's uh, the, the Romania show, it's pretty obvious. Uh, Facebook.com uh, slash uh, the Romania show. And um, uh, we'll see, you know, we'll have lots of fun coming up. So, the show, assuming everything works out, is going to be uh, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Romania time. And it's going to run, I'm thinking, about an hour because uh, I could probably talk for three or four hours, but I got other stuff to do. And I'm not sure anybody really wants to watch me talk for three hours. But uh, um, yes, that's the show. So, you, all right, kids, are you having fun over there, young? Yeah. All right, good. We got the kids on board. Um, we got a few uh, surprises coming up later this week. And of course, we got. Timmy the Sheep on the soundboard. He's my helper here. Because uh, the show that you're watching is done completely by one person, which is me. Uh, I'm running the software, I'm running the internet, I'm running everything here. So, uh, you know, I, I had some people make some strange comments. You know, they're like, oh, well, I thought your show was going to be like, uh, you know, the show that I see on TV. And I'm like, uh, that show right there is in a million dollar studio with all kinds of cat, uh, crew, and, and technicians, and, you know, cameras that cost $100,000, and all this other stuff, and, you know, it's like, hey, we're, we're, we might get there one day, all right, but at the moment, this is an internet TV show, uh, and it's available for anyone who wants to watch it. Now, why am I doing this show live? Because for the first week, I did this show, uh, recorded ahead of time, and did some post-processing, and I uh, wanted to do that just to uh, see how it worked and try out some different elements. But um, obviously we're going live now. Now the reason for that is because a lot of people ask me questions. And instead of me answering them one at a time, I thought it'd be kind of cool to, uh, you know, answer them live. or recorded this part of the show. Anything, because who knows? I don't know. Maybe you got some questions. Maybe you got a comment. Maybe you saw something on the news about Romania and you don't quite understand what's going on. Um, this show is for people who speak English. And uh, some people ask me, will it be in Romanian? The answer is no. Uh, we, I'm happy to discuss the Romanian language and uh, answer any questions like that for you. But the show is in English. Now, it's in English because there's already literally 500 shows uh, about Romania in the Romanian language. Also in the Hungarian language. So... Which, please don't ask me any Hungarian questions because I don't understand Hungarian. So, there are millions of people who are either living in Romania, visiting Romania, uh, married to or dating somebody from Romania, and they don't speak the Romanian language and they don't always know what's going on. So, uh, but they still have a, an interest in Romania. So, this is the show for those people. So, yay! <laughs> Alright, anybody who likes Romania, this show is for you. So, let's get to this. Oh, how. I almost forgot. The live part of it is that any of you watching this um, can join in. Now, I know that Ustream has a little chat feature, but I don't want to have a window open, so I can't see that at the moment. But, what I do have is I have Twitter, and I'm going to uh, click that right here. And if you use Twitter, you can just use the hashtag the Romania show hashtag, meaning the little uh, pound sign as we call it in English, and use the Romania show. And I realize it's probably a little bit blurry if you're watching the live thing, but um, I'm showing a uh, the latest tweet that I picked up. My Twitter is running. So if you have a question or comment um, and you send me, uh, use the hashtag of the Romanian show, it should show up live on my feed here in the corner. So I'm going to leave that in the screen. And I also have Skype set up. So we'll get to that in a minute because uh, I don't see anybody on the Skype at the moment. But uh, my Skype at, uh, name is the Romania show. Pretty obvious. Uh, one word, all connected. So... Let's get to the news and see what's going on here because I got a few uh, 
things going on here. I got some notes that I took because I knew there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about. Yesterday in Romania, this guy, uh, Kovar Laszlo, who is the president of the parliament in Hungary, uh, don't know too much about him. I do know he's a member of Fidesz, which is the ruling party in Hungary. He was here in Romania yesterday. And, you know, good gracious, I mean, Romania and the subject of Hungary, I understand, is a sensitive topic, but basically, when something like this happens, all the nuts come out of the out of the woodwork. First of all, why was this guy even here? Partly because there's an election coming up on Sunday here in Romania, that's June 10th, and, uh, in fact, a TV show called me, I'm not going to say the name because, you know, they got a little snippy with me, but they called me today and said, hey, who are you going to vote for? Well, you know, I, I can't vote, maybe next year, but... There is an election coming up. This guy, Kovar Laszlo, uh, who's the president of the Hungarian parliament, came here because a lot of Hungarians in Romania have double citizenship. And the reason they do that is because Hungary, the country of Hungary, is uh, a sad little remnant of a former empire, and there's super crazy nationalists running the government. And so, you know, they're one of their objectives is to give every single Hungarian in the universe if they, you know, if your name is slightly Hungarian and you can answer three questions with the Hungarian word, you can get a citizenship there because, you know, they're trying to hang on to their people, even though, of course, they're citizens of Romania and they've been living here their whole life. So, but they can't vote in Hungarian elections. So the guy partly came because he wanted to drum up some votes for Hungarian elections. And he also went to, um, Secli land, which is in the center of Romania, where a lot of uh, secular Romanians live, and he was trying to drum up support for the PCM party, which is the crazy nationalist Hungarian party. Meanwhile, UDMR, UDMR, which is the mainstream Hungarian party, and a heck of a lot more popular here in Cluj, thank goodness, you know, they were like, dude, what are you doing here, man? You, 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 you're stirring the pot. So, the guy came... Victor Ponta, who's the Romanian prime minister, you know, this guy, he's just pandering. He's like, you know, he better not do anything or I'm going to kick him out of the country. Or I'm going to have my boy kick him out. Well, you know, the guy didn't do anything, all right? Yeah, he got some people upset and they had a big parade and marched around in their Hungarian clothes and all this other crap. But, you know, the guy's not a complete idiot. But Victor Ponta's just showing, like, look, man, look at me. Look how tough I am. I, I told the Hungarian where to, where to step off. All right, whatever. But... Yesterday, I mean, I was I was laughing because you, sometimes you have to laugh, and if you don't laugh, you cry. But I saw a Romanian citizen named Chibi Barma, who is basically Looney Tunes, and he's a Hungarian guy, and he's marching around with a sign around his neck saying, you know, the, this land is occupied by the settlers and unfairly occupied, and it's supposed to be Hungary, and, you know, he... So, last night, he was on a... Uh, by the telephone, he was on a news channel I watch, and you know, one of the things he was saying, this is Chibi Bartman, mind you, not the Covert uh, Laszlo guy, but Chibi Bartman was saying that the Treaty of Trianon is no longer in effect. Now, this treaty came into existence in 1920 after World War One, and essentially it's the legal document that makes Transylvania and a lot of other parts of uh, modern-day Romania as part of Romania because it used to be part of Hungary. And as a result of World War I, uh, Hungarian Empire, uh, Hungarian, Austro-Hungarian Empire lost that war, and a lot of uh, different Hungarian uh, uh, lands or whatever you want to call it, where a lot of Hungarians were living suddenly found themselves living in another country. So this is the Treaty of Trianon. So this guy, Chibi is like, it's no longer in effect. If you look at the documents, you can see that it's, you know, it's expired and all this crap. Or it's no longer, it's null and void. So the guy talking to him on the news show, a Romanian guy, they're talking in Romanian language. And uh, I have to say that, you know, the guy did a pretty good job of being pretty rational. Because he said, hey, wait a second. Isn't Hungary part of NATO? Yes. Isn't Romania part of NATO? And yes. And you know, European Union together, of course. And didn't they sign... A document when they join these two organizations affirming the Treaty of Trianon is in effect. Well, yeah, I guess they did. And the guy's like, well, then it's in effect. He's like, okay, it's in effect. So, you know, I realize there's a few crazy Hungarians. I would just want to say that I know plenty of Hungarians who live here in Cluj and they're completely normal people. 
proud of their culture and their language, which is fine, but, um, you know, they're not these nutbags. And of course, I know a few Romanians who are nuts. You know, they, I mean, I had a guy literally for an hour sit there and tell me that Budapest, capital of Hungary, okay, for those of you who get a little confused, has tanks and, and planes, and the moment's notice, they're going to, you know, sweep back into Romania and steal it back. Well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's, there's crazy people everywhere, and the problem is that they, of course, um, you know, ruin everything for all the normal people. So, let's switch gears here. Uh, the local elections is going on um, all over Romania, not just in uh, the Hungarian parts. And, you know, a guy said something interesting yesterday to me. He said, you know, there's not one single debate that's taken place, not even in Bucharest, not in the big cities, nothing. All that's happened this year, and this is kind of sad, I mean, uh, pathetic, is that one party will have their guy who's running, and he'll say, you know, have a big, you know, like, uh, staged event, and woo, I'm the best, and da 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 let's have a little music, and wave flags around, and uh, you know, big speech, and of course, it's packed with all his supporters, and yeah, they, they uh, cheer and everything else, but, you know, there's no engagement with the, with the other people running for, for all of this. And according to Romanian uh, media laws, you know, they got to have different guys from different parties on their shows. But it's like, Tuesday is red team guy, Wednesday is orange team guy, and never the twain shall meet. So it's kind of bad because it'd be nice to see, like, for the voters, you know, like, especially in some of the bigger contests, uh, you know, Bucharest or Cluj or whoever, or wherever, you know, hey, let's get all the guys on stage and let's have a little talk and see, who, you know, what's what because... Uh, you know, there's these different parties, and I don't think anyone's really, uh, you know, they already know who they're going to vote for. So, you know, it's just, it's it's technically democratic, but it's it's not particularly democratic. But anyway, that's uh, been going on, and speaking of which, uh, one of the top stories you'll see is Mr. P's fails to please. That's my little joke, because uh, the mayor of Constanza is a man named Radu Mazare, which technically means P's. And this guy, I mean, you know, he's a nut. He's been a nut for years. I mean, he, he's straight up mafia guy, straight up, uh, as they call him, I mean, Schmecker, which just means like a little con artist. You know, the, I mean, this guy, honestly, I, I got serious questions about his orientation on certain things. But two days ago, he was on this big boat that they just inaugurated outside of Constanza, I guess some kind of like pleasure boat is how you call it, or kind of like a mini cruise boat, and he's hanging off the back of this boat with a megaphone, and he's really saying some terrible things, he's like, to the, you know, opposition party, he's a red team member, not the orange team members don't have their own crazy uh, people, but he's hanging off the boat saying, kiss my ass, and all this, you know, just juvenile behavior, now, besides everything else crazy that this guy's ever done, and I'm really not going to get into it too much, but a couple of years ago, this guy was at a party dressed up like a Nazi soldier. You know, and he was just like, ha, 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 just a joke, no big deal. I mean, you know, this is the mentality of this guy. And every time he's always windsurfing, you know, windsurfing is fine. You know, no Romanians that I know, uh, or at least not the ordinary ones, have the money to go windsurfing. So he's a bit of an elitist, and of course he's, you know, got money all over the place from who knows where. But, you know, he's always at parties, he's always, I mean, he, the guy is just out of control. I don't really know why people go sense to vote for him, but... That's what they do. But yeah, so the elections are going on and all kinds of fun people like these two jokers are coming in. Now, this is very interesting. Last Friday, as in um, less than a week ago, the new Minister of the Economy, uh, his name is Kitsoyu, he uh, had a little statement to the press saying, uh, yeah, for sure, Roger Montana is going to, you know, get going this year. Now, the deal with Roche Montana, again, I've talked about it in my last show, but is that there's a giant mountain that has a lot of gold buried in it. It's apparently been mined since Roman times, but there's still quite a bit of gold in that mountain, and, you know, right around there. And a Canadian company bought the rights to mine it. And this was two or three years ago. It was a while ago. Might have been even longer ago than that. But they've never been able to begin work on, on removing this gold because... The only uh, cost-effective way to do it, 
according to them, is to use cyanide to kind of leach it out. Now, everybody who is an ordinary person, which is, I only know ordinary people here in Maine, they're all completely against it because uh, it's basically pollution. Uh, they're, you know, who wants to have a giant, I mean, they're, they they got to build a special dam to store all the cyanide. You know, I've heard people tell me that, you know, they've got a plan to recycle the cyanide somehow. But, you know, basically every single person that I've ever heard, ever, uh, is against it. And what's very interesting is that Victor Ponta, who was the, the new prime minister back when he was not the prime minister, he uh, was like, oh, it's terrible. It's because, you know, it was a project by the Orange team. You know, he was against it. Well, his minister, remember, he's in power now, Ponta, and he has a guy working for him named Kitsoyo, and Kitsoyo on Friday said, oh, yeah, Russia moved on, full steam ahead. Well, uh, yesterday, Ponta was like, you know what, uh, we're going to still think about it a little bit because he knows that nobody, the elections are coming up, nobody wants to hear, maybe after the elections he can do it, great, but, you know, <laughs> dude, be quiet. So, speaking of Victor Ponta, he's yet to nominate a new education minister, um, which is interesting because he's already on his third one. He's been in power, I don't know, four or five weeks, Ponta has. First one, uh, I forget her name, I think it's, uh, I, can't, I can't remember her name at the moment, but just an idiot. You know, a, a five-year-old child could have known that she was a bad choice. Romanians, by the way, you know, uh, they actually have a law on television that you can't uh, overly disparage people, especially in an election cycle. And, you know, they can't show them in handcuffs and, you know, they got all these rules. Okay, that's fine. I don't have those rules. Romanians tend to be like too, uh, I don't want to say too strong a language, even though, you know, complete crook. I mean, this lady, crooked as the day is long. And uh, the scandal that uh, got her withdrawn before she was even confirmed was the fact that uh, she has a CV or a resume, as we say in American English. And she said, oh, I went to Stanford University in California. Now, it's a prestigious university, but she wrote, stand Ford, you know, she misspelled it, and of course, you know, a cursory check of her, uh, of the school, oh, she, she didn't ever study here, she's just a big liar. So then, the guy that Ponta picked after that was a guy named Yon Mung, or Meng, as I like to call him. Mo, oh, I'm Mr. Mung, you know, this big, old, stupid Romanian dude, he, he looks like he's been a communist all his whole life. Well, it turns out, you know, supposed to be this professor of mathematics and all this, you know, cryptanalysis uh, stuff. And it turns out, well, the guy's an idiot and he's been plagiarizing everything he ever published. H him and his wife. So, you know, oh, well, I have to withdraw, but it's not because of that. It's because uh, I just blah, blah. No, you, dude, you couldn't tie your own shoelaces, all right? You copied everything in your ding-dong papers. So now we're on the third Minister of Education, who is this idiot named Liviu Pop. Now, before he was even, you know, he's now he's, he's the interim one because he hasn't been officially installed. I mean, he's, he is the education minister, but he's the interim one. Now, before he even opened his mouth, already people looked at his CV and he's got the name of the university where he's teaching completely spelled wrong. So I was laughing at him on my blog, and then the next day, uh, when his name was, uh, you know, published, he went on TV. And, you know, the guy can barely speak Romanian. He's a Romanian guy. He was making all these grammar mistakes and, you know, hey, hey, I'm a new education minister. So, that's a kind of important right now. So, Ponta can't find the new one because, you know, good Lord, who is he going to find somebody after that? Because, you know, it's all about, you know, he's got to reward his people. He can't actually pick somebody who knows what they might be doing. So... The baccalaureate, the, basically the high school graduation exams are coming up, and the big scandal is, you know, should they have video cameras or not? And this genius leave you pop said, well, uh, next year, um, we're going to have some this year, next year it's going to be voluntary, so the people who do want to use cameras can use them. Yeah, all right, genius. All right, I talked about that yesterday, so we're not going to stay into that now. Um... Some good news, which I uh, have on here somewhere, is uh, I saw two cool things today. One is Norway, which makes a ton of money off their petroleum and gasoline 
you know. <laughs> well, yeah, they're good people, but let's be honest, their wealth comes from that stuff. Um, they uh, are donating 306 million euros to Romania to promote, uh, you know, renewable energy sources, which is fantastic, especially because due to the austerity, Romania, or, you know, theoretically that's why they had to cut their own subsidies to people uh, who were building uh, not renewable energy sources, including in Romania. A lot of people want to build wind farms here. And uh, I can tell you just outside my balcony today, it's a little bit windy even here. So, but you know, Romania's got a lot of potential for some really good uh, renewable energy sources. They got their own budget, they got their own subsidies. Norway came through, uh, I believe, yesterday with 306 million euros, which, um, you know, considering uh, that money doesn't get uh, put in someone's pocket, they might actually build something pretty cool. Uh, if you notice on the top, it, um, on the little green, on the little green part up here, uh, the other cool thing is that Germany uh, just announced that uh, it was over the weekend, so it's not exactly uh, indicative, but over the weekend when a lot of people were not working, 50% of the country's energy supply to this week, not in the future, this week, was provided by solar energy. Now, that's cool. I mean, I mean that is kids. I mean, who here likes solar energy? Yay! All right. See, all right. That's what I'm trying to say. So, this isn't some future solar energy. This is solar energy that's working right now. Now, like I said, of course, uh, you know, a lot of factories were closed and stuff. So, uh, they they're calculating that on a regular day with regular usage during the week, it's still a third. So, I mean, that is fantastic. That just shows you that Germany is a country that's you know. High up in the latitude, it's not a lot of sun, it's not a, you know, a country near the equator, and they're still using solar energy right today with the technology that's available. And if they can do it, Romania can do it, anybody can do it. You know, I mean, how long, how long is it going to take before the world figures out, not necessarily solar, but some kind of renewable energy? You know, it's like, if you asked, if you took a five-year-old kid and said, all right, we got one source of energy, which has to be dug out of the ground, takes millions of years to create, and causes pollution and horrible things, or we have energy source B, which is uh, unlimited <laughs> and is constantly being generated. And all you have to do is just you know point something at the sky and it works. Which one are you gonna pick? Hmm, I don't know. That's a tough question. I don't know which one I'm gonna pick. Of course, you're gonna pick solar or wind power or whatever else. So why did Germany? Why does Germany have so many solar powers besides the fact that they're Germans? Well. If you remember, uh, I believe it was uh, last year, it might have been early last year, there was a big problem in Japan with their nuclear reactors, and they had an earthquake and a tsunami, and uh, that knocked off their nuclear energy. And not only was it dangerous and spewed out a bunch of radiation, but it also showed that, you know, your sources of energy are at risk if, uh, if something happens, your energy, your nuclear powers, power plants go offline. So Germany, this is really cool. Not only do they switch to the, uh, solar power, but they've also taken half, already half, since last year, half of their uh, eight nuclear plants have been closed, and they have nine more, so a little bit under half, nine more to go, and they're all going to be closed because Germany's being cool and awesome. So, I wish Romania would do the same thing. They have currently two nuclear power plants sitting right next to each other. It just so happens that it's in an earthquake-prone zone, which means, you know, an earthquake could happen. I'm not going to pull up the documents, but uh, they might be on the website, theromaniashow.com. But the investigatory body who looks into nuclear energy found that there are still a few safety uh, concerns at the Romania one. It's called Cerna Voda, which means black water in uh, Slavic languages. But, you know, what does Ponto want to do? What does the orange team want to do? Red team, yellow team, all the teams, uh, they want to build two more nuclear reactors right next to it. And they're constantly trying to pimp it out to some of the big energy companies. Terrible decision. Let's use solar, let's use wind, okay? Germany can do it, Romania can do it. So, that's awesome. Now, what else have we got? Well, uh... <laughs> Good gracious, there's a lot of all this stuff here. Uh, speaking of energy, I noticed uh, something that kind of went unremarked in the Romanian press, but 
James Warlick, who is the American ambassador to Bulgaria, was uh, essentially fired. They call it recalled in technical speak because he's a diplomat. But he, he's been there two years and nine months. Ordinarily, the term for an ambassador is three years, unless the president, the president of the United States changes, and you know, of course, he puts all his own guys in there. Now, so basically, he got recalled or fired three months early, and all the Bulgarian press was saying is because this Warlick guy. There's an energy company, Chevron, same as in Romania. They want to start doing fracking, which uh, in Romanian is called schist, or schist is the other way to say it. Essentially what they do is they inject like steam and, and, and high uh, volume of liquid into uh, loose sort of uh, rock, and the, the crude comes bubbling up, up comes bubbling crude. And Romania, uh, Romanians, the ordinary Romanians are dead set against it in Romania. Uh, they had a giant demonstration in a little small town called Burlav, which is where the, the Chevron wants to do this fracking against it. You know, the people in Burlav were against it. Of course, uh, the American ambassador to Romania, who is Mark uh, Gittenstein, is a total... I'm not going to say a word about him. I've already written about him plenty of times, but he was like, I think it's a fantastic idea. Hey, Romania, you know... If you're so poor, you should do what we tell you and let Chevron, you know, go frack your country. So, James Warlick, the American ambassador in Bulgaria, uh, was against it. And he got fired. And, you know, the Bulgarian press were like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly because he's anti-fracking. Well, when I came on uh, the news, he's a real popular guy in Bulgaria because he actually seems like a human being and he cares about Bulgaria. Uh, he was like, no, you know, that really wasn't why. They just, you know, there's no freaking reason why. I just, you know, I got recalled just for, you know, fun, funsies. No, what really happened was, um, he can't say why he got fired because his wife is a diplomat and Warlick is going to stay in Bulgaria a little bit longer. His wife's a diplomat, I believe, in Spain. So that's really what's going on. Bravo to that guy, you know, I mean, quite honestly, yeah, yeah. Standing up for regular people instead of being a toady. But, you know, that's what's going on with that. So, <sighs> we talked about all of this, talked about all of that. I only got one more thing on this page. And, oh, here's something interesting. Click. Uh, you might have seen it on the little green part on the top of the screen. Click, uh, which is also owned by the same company that owns Adevoro. Which is a news. Adivoro is a straight newspaper. Uh, they also own a publishing, book publishing thing, and a few stores and all kinds of other stuff. Click, or click, to say it in the Romanian way, is the number one gossip magazine here in Romania, kind of like the uh, National Enquirer in uh, America or the Sun in Britain. And both of these companies, Adivoro and Click, are owned by a guy named Dino Patriciu, who is a baron. I'm not going to get into exactly what a baron is, but these two companies are 3.5 million euros in debt and they're going up on, to be auctioned off today. So, you know, I, I read some comments that secretly he's going to rebuy these companies back under a shell company or whatever, but, you know, it's kind of sad when even the, whatever's going on, this guy Dino Patricio, a big baron, all kinds of ties into everybody who's important here in Romania, you know. Apparently this guy uh, has screwed up things before, but, you know, it just shows to, goes to show you that I don't know who's running the show here. You know, this is a guy who does have money, does have connections, does have power. And what is he doing? He, he can't even operate a, a newspaper and the number one uh, printed uh, periodical or, or uh, I guess, the news, something you find down the newsstand. I don't know the technical term because it's not really a real newspaper, but... Uh, it does have news and information, and it's the number one by far ever sold in Romania, I can tell you, without even relying on statistics, that every time I've ever seen people just lounging around reading something, they're almost always reading click. You know, 3.5 million euros in debt. So, I was also asked to talk about TIFF, which is T-I-F-F dot -F row. If you uh, want to look at the website, it's a big film festival in Cluj, I got to tell you. I'm not quite sure who's interested in that outside of uh, uh, Cluj, but, you know, this film festival is turning out to be, like, incredible. I, I, I mean, I was, they're on their 11th edition here, and to give you an idea how long I've been living here, I remember when it was the first edition, 
And it was uh, three movies and two guys. And now it's turning into like mini con film festival. I mean, there's celebrities coming, not just Romanian celebrities, but you know, American celebrities and all kinds of other people, directors of these movies. They've got, I don't know, four or five movie theaters constantly running movies. They set up a big uh, open air screen downtown. Uh, they were showing movies from 100 years ago, like the first uh, movies ever made. They're showing modern movies. They're showing movies in English, movies in Romanian movies, in every language you could possibly think of. Uh, they're all subtitled in English. And they got a lounge now. They got free Wi Fi. They got souvenirs. They got. I mean, this is turning into a major, major festival, and I gotta tell you, if you're into movies, I'm really not, but if you are, uh, and you're anywhere near Cluj uh, during this time of year, uh, tiff.ro, T-I-F-F dot R-O, and I do believe it's in English as well as other languages, um, you know, it's really turning into a pretty major film festival. And it's kind of interesting to watch it because, like I said, a few years ago, it was like this quiet little thing that happened during the summer. I think they used to hold it a little bit later in the year. Uh, a lot of the students were gone and, um, you know, just something to kind of pass away the time. And, uh, you know, film festival's not that hard to organize if it's real small. And, you know, obscure movies, you know, European movies, you know, black and white movies, 20 minutes of a guy just, you know, look at the world, this is my view on the world, you know, that kind of stuff was going on, but, uh, yeah, now it's turning into the super duper, blah, 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 you know, people just, you know, wow, it's pretty cool, so, anyway, I uh, don't see any messages on Twitter, uh, I guess uh, not too many people are watching this live at the moment, but in the future they hopefully will, but if you do want to join that, it's the t hashtag, the Romanian show, you don't need to write on Twitter, you can just write the Romanian show, and I'm going to click this off here and if you do want to send a message uh, I also have Skype set up uh, which is uh, the Romania show all one word and if we do get a Skype call uh, hopefully or even a video Skype call hopefully we'll be able to I mean not hopefully I already checked it out it should be working and you can talk to me live so we'll see if that comes up and uh, what else we got going on in the news, well, the Romanian low, uh, which is the currency, yeah, nosedive. It's been getting weaker and weaker uh, against both the euro and the dollar. And, you know, it's always cracking me up watching these Romanian politicians trying to, like, justify it. Like, they're like, oh, it's the problems in Greece. Well, if it's the problems in Greece, then why is the, you know, because the euro and all this other stuff, now that's a serious thing, but... Why is the low going down against the dollar then? What's the, what's the dollar got to do with it? Greece, you know? Completely unrelated. Oh, it's also going down against the British pound. Oh, you know, basically, it's the low, okay? And I mean, I saw a guy literally tying himself in knots, trying to explain, like, well, no, everything's fine. It's just, you know, the, the, the euro, the, the currency's going down. That's how that is. You don't need to worry about it, folks. Well, it is something to worry about, because, you know, there's always two sides to everything. Uh, Traditionally, if the currency is depreciated, then exports go up and vice versa. And, you know, there's always some kind of uh, upside to anything if you look at it certain ways. But the problem in Romania, I mean, myself included, is that certain things are priced in euros, which means that uh, they're getting uh, more expensive. And if you're an ordinary person trying to pay... Uh, um, trying to pay uh, uh, the fees for that or whatever, you know, I mean, uh, you suddenly you're paying, you're, you're paying a lot of money. So a lot of people are getting upset, and I'll be honest with you, it's quite obvious that the problem that's going on is due to the lack of political leadership in this country because we've got a crazy guy running in office right now. And we did get a little tweet right there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like to add one yourself, we got a little freebie there for a second, but uh, hopefully my connection speed is fast enough. But uh, yeah, so the prime minister is a nut because unlike every other prime minister Romania's had uh, after, since the revolution, you know, normally what happens is there's an election and then the, the strongest party makes a coalition if necessary with a few other parties and you know they, they're the prime
prime minister. They pick their own prime minister, and the president, you know, confirms it or whatever. But I'm getting a little backwards. The president technically nominates them, but he usually picks the guy who's the most popular or you know, electric, polit you know, due to the elections. But in this particular case, there was an election a couple of years ago. The Orange team essentially won that one, and they made a little deal with the Hungarians, the normal Hungarians. Um, and then there was a lot of protests back in January of 2012 this year, and so the Orange team uh, resigned, and they put in some different Orange team guys, and uh, the red and yellow team, which is Pontus, the head of the red team, but the red and yellow team have a little alliance right now. Well, they did some sneaky stuff, and they, uh, they essentially bribed a few Orange team people to switch sides, and they passed a no-confidence vote, so the Orange team just got completely thrown out of power. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's how parliamentary rules work. But, so the red team, essentially, through parliamentary trickery, became the ruling party. Now, the local elections are happening on Sunday, but the national elections, which affects uh, the parliament, is not going to happen until, I don't know, September, November, October, sometime later this year. So until then, this guy is essentially running on an unelected mandate. And that's why he's putting all his buddies and his crooked little corrupt people in office and he's acting, you know, like, oh, I'm the, I'm the big cheese around here. Well, you know, I'm not quite sure he even has 50% support of most of the remaining people. Of course, some people will support him, but, you know, I don't know. We'll see about that. So, the shh, Leo going, yeah, like a kamikaze in an old World War II movie. He's going straight down, crash and burn, because, well, I'm exaggerating slightly, but some people are, you know, they don't know what this Ponta guy's going to do. In one minute, oh, we're, like I said, Kitsoyo. Oh, we're going to start working on Rodeo Montana, digging up the gold and spreading the sign that, oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. Well, nobody knows what we're doing, so. <laughs> okay. Now, the last thing to talk about, strange mystery in Romania. Back in March, um, there was uh, a man uh, named Mihail Boldia. He was an Orange Team member. And he uh, was a member of parliament uh, from Galat. And he started being investigated by the anti-corruption um, uh, agency, which is called DNA, and uh, that's their initials. And the problem was he was a member of parliament, so he had you know, immunity. So they had a big debate and a vote, and they finally voted to strip him of his immunity, including members of the Orange Team voted for this, because, I mean, the guy, it's pretty obvious he was involved in some pretty crooked stuff, mostly forging, you know, the Romanians, I love their crunch, he was forging documents because he's a lawyer on owning pieces of property, so that he would say, like, okay, now you're the owner, you know, forge a document, and that guy would go around and turn and sell it for him, or in case, some cases he would sell it for himself, and, you know, pocket the difference, and, oh, we'll sort it out later. So, they strip him of his immunity, and they go to arrest him. This is back in March. The guy, pew, took off, ran away. And he left the country, and it was this big scandal, and, you know, the, the TV was asking questions, and they were hauling his brother in and his wife and everybody else. Where is he? Where is he? Then it turns out he was in Turkey, and then later he went to Kenya and Africa. And, you know, this is... I wrote about this on my blog, but it's a pretty funny story. He's in, he's in, uh, he's in, uh, freaking Kenya, and, uh, you know, the, the Romanian authorities call him, and, uh, they say, listen, dude, you better turn yourself in, because, uh, if you don't, uh, we're gonna have the Kenyans lock you up, and he was frightened to death of, uh, being locked up in a Kenyan jail. <laughs> so he was like, oh crap, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't want to spend time in jail with those horrible African people in African jail. So uh, he turned himself into the Romanian embassy in Nairobi and they flew him back to Romania and I believe he's still behind bars and he's still being investigated. Now, all of that's in the past. That happened back in March. But at the end of May, um, on the 21st of May, there was a man named Kodruitz uh, Marta. And that was, 21st of May was the last time anybody saw him. He was at a party. And then a couple days later, <clears throat> his wife went to the police and reported him missing. 
And some of his friends were saying some really bizarre things, like he was kidnapped, or he was, uh, you know, something sinister happened to the guy. So the police opened up an investigation. They determined, yeah, he really is missing. Uh, so far, there's I've never seen anything that said he truly was kidnapped, but um, uh, he's definitely missing. Now, he's being investigated also for uh, by the DNA because he's a corrupt little monkey, and uh, he's gone. Now, here's what's really interesting. He left the country. Both of these guys, Boldia and this guy, left at the same crossing in a place called Juriju, and... Uh, they left the crossing, I mean, they left the, the country, and both of them legally left the country, as in they showed their passport because nobody was smart enough to put a hold on them. Second time this has happened, and he's gone. We don't know where he is. He hasn't come back. He is officially gone. Now, both of these guys also did the same thing, which is that they left their mobile phones at home. And in fact, Kodrut uh, Marto, the guy who's still gone, he actually left his phone in his driver's car. So his driver was driving around for a while with the car, I mean, with the phone in the car. So anybody who's, you know, I don't know, trying to track him or anything else, you know, by the phone, they can't do it. Now, what's really interesting about this uh, Kodruz guy is that he's not a member of parliament. He's actually been working for the government for a long time. He was the number two guy at ANAF, ANAF, which is the Romanian Tax Authority. And... Very, 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 very connected guy. He's essentially the number two guy of uh, a man named Sorin Bleznar. Sorin Bleznar is the bag man for the Orange Team. If the Orange Team was a mafia, this is the money man. He's the one who makes sure the money's right. You know, when you don't pay up, he's the one who comes over and breaks your legs. That's a metaphor. He doesn't actually do that uh, with the real bat, but that's what he's been doing for a long time. And uh, this guy's... Codruz Muerta is not just not just his number two guy. Back when both of these guys were working at the tax agency, they only uh, quit uh, when Ponta came into power because Ponta's red team and these guys are orange team. But you know, Martha and Blejnar, they grew up together in the same town. They went to the same school. Later, they went to the same university. These guys are buddies for life. And when he went missing, uh, Blejnar went to the police and gave an official statement saying, you know, I don't know what happened to him, but he's a great guy. The other guy that came to the police station to give a statement, official statement, saying how great a guy this Kodruz guy was, is Elan Schwarzenberg. Now, this guy, he's got an unusual name, that's because I believe he's Israeli, but uh, I think he's a Romanian citizen too, but this guy owns Realitatia, which is a major news channel that owns several other things, including uh, the Money Channel. This guy is big time influential and big time connected, and he went there to the police station, not only to say, uh, you know, uh, I hope you find him and he's a good guy, but he, 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 he gave a statement to the press saying, I've known this guy 10 years, Kodruz, he knows Kodruz more than 10 years. He's a great guy, he's so awesome, he's fantastic. Now, not only is Marta a, a very wealthy man, according to the information they found out about him, unusually wealthy considering he's been working for the government as a public servant for 30 years but Blejnada and Martha have been screwing things up at the tax agency. Now Romanians a lot of times say why are we so poor? We're so poor. We're so poor. Well the truth of the matter is that part of the reason why Romania is poor is because there are people deliberately defrauding the People. I don't mean just straight corruption, like put it in your pocket and go home still, but, and that's just not my opinion, okay? The, 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 the court of accounts, or the court de contour in Romania, they released a, a very detailed paper. This will be on my website. Um, it's in Romanian, but between 2007 and 2009, when Blechnard and this Martha guy were running the tax agency, it was just all kinds of endemic problems. I mean, some of them were pretty blatant, like uh, people who were making more than 35000 lei a month, which is qu quite a lot of money, and it's $10,000 a month. Uh, anybody who was making that much money and above, they were kind of letting them slide on their taxes. Okay, that's pretty blatant, but a lot of other stuff was bad. They were like, the, their databases weren't working with other agencies. Uh, they, they had no way of enforcing uh, judgments when you know, somebody clearly owed money to the tax agency, and they had no way to enforce it. 
the, their interagency cooperation was was terrible. Um, the, the customs people known as the Vama and, and Roman, you know, they have their database, and this one didn't work with that database. And it's it's quite scandalous. Essentially, it's uh, incompetence. A lot of it is incompetence, and a lot of it is just pure uh, malicious thievery. And if if you want to make ten dollars, you can rob somebody with a gun. If you want to make a million dollars, you got to learn how to rob them with you know paperwork, which is what these two jokers have been doing. And it's very interesting that Marta Codruz is missing and out of the country. Nobody knows where he is, and yet he's a good body of all these very well-connected people. And the story has completely disappeared from the news. So I have no idea other than that what's going on. Um, I definitely will be posting some documents because uh, there's definitely interesting to me that you know this one guy Bolde was the scandal of the century when he took off, and then you know he got caught. And then this Joker is way, way more connected to what's wrong and going on here, wrong in Romania. You know, he's gone and do do do, no big deal. I really don't care. But anyway, uh, I think that is the uh, my preview is showing me that the, the video is blocked. Uh, I see the audio is working. I will have to check and see later. Uh, the live show has been going on. Didn't get any Skype calls today, but uh, if you would like to call me on Skype during the time the show is on the air. I'll show you what that little uh, window looks like. And there you go, you can see it right there. And I can just, uh, The Romanian Show is the name of my Skype account there. And Twitter, of course, is The Romanian Show hashtag. And that's how you get a hold of me. Or, of course, you can write to me on the website, theromanianshow.com, not too hard. And I think I'm going to wrap up the show here. Is there anything else, kids? Uh, did you have fun today? Yeah. All right, awesome. Timmy, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, Timmy's doing good. I, my mouth is dry. It's been a while since I talked this long. But I just want to thank all of you for watching. And uh, looks like we've got some few technical things to fill around with for the next show. But it should appear in its high-quality glory on YouTube every day on the website and until then I uh, will see if I can press the right button and now we can listen to some credit. <laughs>